Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mount Olive. I'd like to welcome you once again to this online worship opportunity that we're, we're so glad we could bring you. Uh, much like last week, we're going to have everything you need for this worship service contained in the video itself. The, the words to the responses will be on the screen. The, the words to the hymns to, to sing along will be on your screen as well. I know this is quite a bit different than, than gathering together here at Mount Olive, but we do pray that this serves you well during this time as we have an opportunity to, to hear God's word together and to respond with, with words of praise and, and thanks. We begin with our opening hymn and, and pray Lord's blessings on your worship this morning. love unknown my Savior's love to me love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be oh who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus to grant us forgiveness. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the words of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Eternal God and Father, help us to remember Jesus, who obeyed your will, and bore the cross for our salvation, that through his anguish, pain, and death, we may receive forgiveness of sins and inherit eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the Old Testament book of Exodus, chapter 3. It's the account of Moses and the burning bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them, so now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, 
has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. This is the word of our God. We'll continue by joining together with our psalm of the day. His greatness no one can fathom One generation will commend your works unto another They will tell of your mighty acts So that all men may know They will tell of your mighty acts And the splendor of In our second lesson, we're reminded that Christ's perfect sacrifice on the cross cleanses us from all our sinful acts that lead to death. Very comforting words, especially in light of our sermon text for today. Our second lesson comes from Hebrews chapter 9. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. That is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. 
This too is the word of our God. We'll join together in singing the hymn of the day. portion of God's word that we'll focus our attention on together for a few minutes this morning, even though we're not together in person, comes from John chapter 8. We'll begin at verse 46. Jesus says to his opponents, the Pharisees, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear 
is that you do not belong to God. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my Father and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. At this, the Jews exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death? Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him, and you have seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. This is the word of our God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A few weeks ago, two weeks ago, the last time that we were able to gather here together at Mount Olive, we took some precautions. You might remember uh, the governor's ban on gatherings was not in place yet. We were still able to gather legally. But we still took some precautions out of love for our brothers and sisters who, who might be more susceptible to this virus. We, we made some changes. We had hand sanitizer all over the, the building. We wiped down the pews with disinfecting wipes before the service. We made changes like we didn't shake hands. We didn't pass the offering plates up and down the pews. We didn't pass the worship registers around. We even made some changes as to how we distribute the, the Lord's Supper. And with good reason. We, we did those things out of love for each other, out of love for our, our neighbor, not wanting to, to spread a, a disease that can be deadly. A lot of the changes that are being made in our society, the, 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 the changes that the government is recommending or even commanding, we can look at these all and say these are all love for our neighbor. But there can be another reason that these changes are made. It is very possible that people would make these changes simply because they're afraid, simply because they're afraid of what they might lose. Afraid of losing something in this life afraid of losing this life. It is possible that people would make these changes simply because they're afraid of death and that's possible for you and it's possible for me. It's possible to, to be afraid of death itself. You know that many people in this world today are afraid. They're afraid of what they might lose. But you and I are different. As Christians, we don't make the changes that we make. We don't obey the government simply because we're afraid of dying. We're not afraid of dying. We're not afraid of dying because we know what the scriptures tell us about Jesus and who he is. He's God's promised Messiah, the I am God, the same one who, who spoke to Moses. 
come to save his people from their sins, come to rescue you and me from sins which lead to death, to pay for our sins with his innocent sacrifice, as we heard in our second reading, so that our, constant, our consciences could be cleansed from the acts that lead to death. This is why Jesus came, to free us from our fear of death. And so, no, we're, we're not doing this today because we're afraid of dying. No, we're doing this today because we respect our government, because we love our neighbor. But surely not because we're afraid of death. Two weeks ago, when we gathered here, we heard Jesus' opponents, the Pharisees, attack him with an accusation that he, he was driving out demons by the power of Satan, so they thought. They were basically saying, the only reason you're able to do this is because Satan is giving you the power to do this. You're not from God. You're not on God's team. You're on Satan's team. I'm not going to preach that whole sermon over to you again, but, but in short... Jesus forced them to consider that the reason they thought he was from Satan, the reason they hated him and wanted him dead, was actually because they were in Satan's kingdom. They thought they were in God's kingdom. They thought they were servants of the one true God, but in fact, they were servants of the devil. That they were following his lies. And now, a little while later, Jesus is again having a very similar conversation with these, these Pharisees. They're convinced that, that he is from Satan. Jesus begins by, by saying to them, Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Think of how intense that attack is. Once again, just like we heard two weeks ago, Jesus is saying to the Pharisees, the problem here is not that I'm from Satan, it's that you're in his kingdom. If you belonged to God, you would hear God's word, you would listen to what God says, but the fact that you don't listen to God's word is proof that you don't belong to God. That is an incredible insult, especially for these men who thought of themselves as the spiritual fathers of the Israelite people, the ones who were tasked with the important responsibility of shepherding God's people through this life. Of course they think that they belong to God. They're a part of the chosen nation. They're God's chosen people. And yet Jesus right here says to them, the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. And of course that sets them off. Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? Jesus starts to defend himself. He begins by defending his own person. He says, I am not possessed by a demon. But, but he doesn't just keep defending himself over and over and over again. He, he next defends the source of his teaching. He says, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. So the Pharisees attack Jesus. He defends himself. He defends the source of his teaching. But then finally, he, he stops defending himself. He stops defending even the source of his teaching, even his Father. He simply defends the word, the word of God that these Pharisees had, the word of God that these Pharisees were supposed to be experts in, he simply defends the word. I tell you the truth. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. And this is where the Pharisees think they've really got Jesus. Jesus is claiming that his word is God's word and that if anyone keeps his word, they will never taste death. And the Pharisees say, look at Abraham. Look at Isaac. Look at the prophets. They believed God's word. They all died, Jesus. What do you have to say about that? 
Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died and so did the prophets. Yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? They're convinced. They have Jesus trapped. Abraham died. The prophets died. You're wrong, Jesus. But by simply defending God's word, Jesus proves how wrong they were. I want you to open up again to to Exodus chapter 3. It was our our first reading just a few minutes ago. Um, In that section of, of Moses and the burning bush, God introduces himself to Moses. In verse 6, he says to Moses, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. A few verses later, after Moses was was doubting and, and wondering, if the Israelites ask me who sent me to them, who do I tell them? This is what God says. I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Think about that. When God refers to himself as the I am, am God. Specifically, when he introduces himself and says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had been dead for hundreds of years. They had been with God in heaven for centuries. God could have said, I was the God of Abraham. I was the God of Isaac. I was the God of Jacob. No, no, no. He says, I am right now. And and so right away we know that when Jesus says, anyone who keeps my word will never see death, he's not talking about physical death. Abraham did die. The, The Pharisees were right. His body stopped working. He believed God's word. Same thing with Isaac and Jacob. And if Jesus doesn't return first, you and I will die We will taste physical death, but not spiritual death, not death in hell. The moment we die here, we're with God. He continues to be our God, just as he continues to be Abraham, Isaac's, and Jacob's God. To this day, he is Abraham's God. And Abraham died almost 2,000 years ago. This helps us to understand the the heart of the Pharisees' true issue. They were afraid. They were afraid of losing everything they had. That's why they hated Jesus. Jesus was a threat to their power. He was a threat to their role in Jewish society. But do you know what else was a threat to their role? Do you know what else was a threat to their leadership? Death. Death. If they died, their string of power would be over. If they died, everything they feared losing would be lost. These these Pharisees are afraid of losing everything. They're afraid of dying, and, and so they hate Jesus because he teaches something different. This is something we can relate to right now. During this crazy time in world history, there's a lot of blessings in our lives. God has given us so much, and so much of it, it's all blessings. But like any blessings, we can turn those blessings into bad things. We can turn them into idols. We can crave them instead of the creator himself, the one who gave the blessings to us. And now in this difficult time, God has essentially removed so much of these blessings from our lives. For those of us who 
who, who get our identity in our jobs and our vocations. A lot of that has been removed temporarily. The different roles that God has given us in this life, many are unable to go to work right now. Those of us who, who receive satisfaction from social gatherings and opportunities to, to take our children here and take them there and do this and, and do that, all of a sudden so much of this has been removed from our lives. The things that we enjoy to, to watch, the things that we enjoy doing, the places we like going, the, the restaurants, the beaches, the vacations, so much of it has been removed. Are you afraid of losing it forever? What if you never do get your job back? What if your kids miss that all-important window to become superstars in sports? What if the world never gets back to the way it once was? Are you afraid of losing all that? And if you are, if you're afraid of losing everything that we've been given in this life, what happens if you die tomorrow? What happens if you fall victim to this virus? Are you afraid of, of dying? Are you afraid of everything in this life the way you used to know it? Are you afraid of it all disappearing forever? If you are, I have really good news for you. Your God says don't be afraid. It's a message that is found in all of God's word. It's a message that Abraham heard when God said to him, do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield, your very great reward. It's a message that Joshua heard as he was about to, to go into the promised land when God told him not to be afraid, not to be discouraged because the Lord his God would be with him wherever he went. It was a message heard by the prophets. It was a message heard by Zechariah when he was told that he would be the father of John the Baptist. A message heard by Mary and her fiancé Joseph as they heard Mary would be the mother of the Christ. Do not be afraid. It was a message that those Christians heard at the tomb that first Easter Sunday, do not be afraid was a message Jesus brought to his disciples as he appeared to them after he rose from the dead. Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. It's a message that God brings to you. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. You, you could lose everything in this life, but you won't lose Jesus. You could lose your own life to this virus, but you won't lose your God. He's the I am God. And Jesus, your Savior, is that same I am. As he said so beautifully, before Abraham was, I am. This is the God who tells you not to fear. This is the God who says to you and to me, don't be afraid of anything in this life. Don't be afraid of losing your job. Don't be afraid of losing your wealth. Don't be afraid of losing your friends or your family. Don't be afraid of losing your life because in Jesus, you will never die. This life's death, earthly death, is not the end. In Jesus, you will not die see death. You will live forever. Jesus, your Savior, the I Am, will be your God now and forever. His sacrifice has cleansed your conscience from the acts that lead to eternal death in hell. His sacrifice on the cross means you are at peace with God forever. So do not be afraid. If we could go back in time a month and we could tell ourselves one month ago that on 
Sunday, March 29th, we'd be doing this, we would have laughed. None of us saw this coming. And, and I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know how long it'll be until we can gather again here together. I don't know how long it'll be before we can gather together up in the front of this church to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of all of our sins. I don't know. I don't know how long it'll be until we can actually gather together again here. But this much I do know. Whether it's days or weeks or months, even if it's years, even if we never gather ag together again in this building because one or many of us die, we don't need to be afraid. That much I know. And, and the reason I know that, the same reason you know that, is because we, we know God's word. We know what Jesus says, and his promise to us is clear. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. This whole word is God's promise to you and to me. So do not be afraid. Cling to the promises of the I am God. And Lord willing, we will be together again. If not here, then certainly forever in heaven. Amen. Let's join together in our common confession of, of faith. It should appear on your screen here shortly. Living in a world where people believe that the universe was formed through chance and accident, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And living in a world where people are confronted with the guilt and punishment of sin, what do you believe Jesus did for you? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And living in a world where people are without hope and certainty, what do you believe? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join together in the prayer of the church at this time. As always, we pray this, this prayer on behalf of this congregation in this corner of God's kingdom, as well as on behalf of our brothers and sisters in God's church throughout the world. We pray. Heavenly Father, you loved the world and gave your Son to liberate us from sin and death by his obedient death on the cross. We confess that without your love, we are lost. Lord of the church, we thank you for the treasure of the gospel. By your Spirit, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Strengthen our determination to do what pleases you, no matter what the danger or the cost. Let us pray for those who carry a cross in the name of Christ and face ridicule and persecution for the sake of the kingdom, missionaries and chaplains, young people who stand up for what is right in the face of pressure to do what is wrong, and all who pay a high price for their faith and their values as Christians. By your Spirit, O Lord, grant them patience and endurance. Let us pray for those who carry heavy burdens in life, the sick and the chronically ill, the depressed and the lonely, those torn by conflict in personal relationships, those victimized by war and injustice, and all who face the terrors of life with a heavy heart. Grant them peace, O Lord, and in your mercy be their guardian and friend, their comfort and hope. Let us pray for those who care for others, 
pastors and counselors, physicians and nurses, social workers and caring friends, all who feed the hungry, comfort the hurting, and stand beside the dying. Strengthen them in their work, O Lord, and do not let them become weary in doing good. Heavenly Father, great physician, we come before you today on behalf of all those who are sick and suffering from this disease and any other. We ask that if it be your will, you would bring healing in our nation and around the world, that you would lead doctors and, and scientists to find solutions to better treat those who are sick, that their time in the hospital may be short, that they may make room for anyone else who, who needs medical care. If it be your will, we, we pray that you would lead our, our nation and guide those making important decisions. That you would bless us in whatever way you see fit. And through this all, Lord, we ask that you would keep our eyes focused on Christ. Help us to remember that he is all we need. Help us to, to cling to your word and the promises therein. That we would be confident that no matter what happens in this life, this death is not the end. In Christ, we will live with you forever. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Help us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Keep us faithful even to the point of death that we may receive the crown of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught, with the confidence that you will hear us and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. For it was your only Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close with our final hymn.
We'd like to welcome you all here to Mount Olive once again. We are so glad that you were able to join us for worship. And as always, we do pray that the Lord blessed your worship with us. All the announcements for today were also found in the email that went out recently. I um, wanted to draw your attention to just a, a few of those. First off, there, there were uh, resources for Sunday school that were emailed out for those of you with children um, so that hopefully you can continue to, to do some Sunday school lessons with your kids at, at home. There's also links to a Bible study that will begin at 10 a.m. this morning, 10 a.m. Sunday, the 29th of March. We'll have a live Bible study. The links to that study are in the email that went out um, last night, Saturday night, and this morning, Sunday morning. If you have any problems with that whatsoever, please do call me on my, on my cell phone. I'll be happy to help you get that set up. Um, that'll begin at 9 a.m. today. Um, also, our new website is, is live on mountoliveswamico.com. That's mtoliveswamico.com. Um, the, the website was kind of rushed here at the last minute. We were working on this and, and hoping to roll it out before Easter, but we did try to get it out early so that we can have updated, accurate information. I um, encourage you to check out the resources tab um, at the top right of your screen. You'll find our, our worship services, um, both in video and audio format. If you listen to podcasts on your phone, um, you'll be able to listen to these sermons um, week after week as you go about your life. Maybe listen to it again or, or catch a sermon if you missed it. There's all sorts of other awesome um, resources at the bottom of the email that went out this week. Links to Time of Grace, um, links to the Gospel of John video that was sent out where it's the NIV text of the Gospel of John set to a, a beautiful biblical narrative where you can see the events happening in front of you. Um, so much more. We will continue to be reaching out to you all in the days and weeks to come. As always, if there's anything that we could do to serve you here at Mount Olive during this difficult time, um, be it with prayers or financial needs or anything else at all that you could possibly need, please do reach out and, and let me know. Uh, my contact information is readily available on the website as well as in the, the emails. Our prayers are with you, my brothers and sisters. You're in my prayers, and I know the prayers of our leaders here at Mount Olive. Lord's blessings to you all the rest of this week.